Well, hi, NAP members. It's Scott Kelby, and I have a tutorial for you today that I um, was inspired by seeing a frame, a framed print on a, a poster's website. And so, if you went and if you saw a poster you liked, you could get a framed option. It showed you a preview of the frame and a preview of the mat. And upon seeing it, I realized, wow, they did that in Photoshop, and I think I could figure out how to do it in Photoshop, and I did. It's kind of cool, and I'm going to show it to you now. Um, but it's it's kind of nice because although the frame part works great for showing your stuff in framed on the web, so if you're doing something on a blog or a gallery or something, it's kind of nice to put this frame around it. But the matte technique I'm going to show you, I actually use when I do framed prints. So um, if if I don't want I want to make it look like I matted it without actually adding a matte, I do this technique and it works surprisingly well. All right, so let's start off by adding a new layer. So it starts off really simple, just simple new layer. Let's grab the uh, blank document here, of course, and let's grab the rectangular marquee tool. You're going to draw how large you want your frame to be. So how about something like that? And then we'll not deselect. There we go. And fill it with black. There we go. So you draw a rectangle, fill it with black. So far, so good. Now you're going to draw another rectangle inside, which is how big, how thick you want your frame borders to be. And so how about something like that? And then just hit delete. So easy enough. The problem is it looks very, very flat. And it's because it doesn't have any lighting. It doesn't have any dimension or depth. So we're going to add that using gradients. So here's what we do. Get the polygonal lasso tool over here in the toolbar. And we're going to draw a diagonal line right here, right through the corner, something like that. We're going to come down here and down here and then up there. So we kind of draw this all the way around there. Now, of course, I don't want all this other stuff. All I want is what's that little sliver of text right there. I mean, excuse me, a little sliver of the frame right there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hold a keyboard shortcut. Shift, Option, Command on Mac. It would be Shift, Alt control on PC and then just go over here and click on the layer thumbnail. That's the shortcut for intersect and boom it just gives you that one little selection. Now create a new layer. Go get the gradient tool. We're just going to use the standard gradient tool and then we're going to use the standard black to white gradient which is the third gradient in the default set of gradients. Now you're going to take the gradient tool and just drag upward. Hold the shift key so it draws a nice straight line. There you go. And You're going to drag upward kind of like that. All right. Now we're going to just lower the opacity so it kind of looks more like light falling on it. Maybe something like that. Okay. And then we can actually just cut off the bottom where we want it. Let's just cut it off about right there. All right. So we have a nice hard edge over on this side. Now go back to your frame layer. So in the layers palette, just click on your frame layer. In fact, let's hide the adjustments here. Go to your frame layer. Then we're going to go over to this side and uh, we're going to grab the polygonal lasso tool once again we're going to do this corner. So kind of draw a diagonal line through there. Same trick you just learned. All right. And hold Shift, Option, Command, and click on the layer thumbnail. On PC, Shift, Alt, Control, and click on the layer thumbnail. And we're going to drag the gradient once again. We'll drag it like this. And then lower the opacity. This time, instead of cutting it off, whoops. Here's a key thing. You've got to create a new layer. So let me back up. Let's undo my gradient. Undo. Undo. There we go. The keyboard shortcut for undo is Option Command Z on Mac or Alt Control Z on PC. And let's add a new layer. You have to add a new layer. So, and then we drag the gradient. Yes, that's much better. All right. And then we'll kind of just lower the opacity a bit. So it kind of blends in. You can see a little bit of a hard edge still there, right? Let's just bring it down quite a bit. You can see a little bit of a hard edge. So you could add a layer mask or something to get rid of that if you really want it, but I'm okay with it. Now go back to the frame layer, and now we're going to select this corner. You want to kind of follow the same angle as you did the first one. We'll come down here and draw that. All right, same keyboard shortcut, Shift, Option, Command, Click on the layer thumbnail to select it. Remember to add a new layer this time. There you go. And then we're going to drag upward, holding the shift key. So we get that part of the frame. All right. And I'll bring this opacity down a bit as well. And see, you see a little gap up there? That's good. That's actually what you want. You want to see that little gap between the two. Like that. And except for I'm going to make it a little brighter. And then I'm going to cut it off approximately where I cut the other one off. So remember this right here, I'll just kind of cut it off right there so they kind of have the 
share the same kind of thing. And then lastly, we'll go to the bottom frame. We're going to select this bottom corner here, like this, and we'll select that. Same keyboard shortcut, Shift, Option, Command, click, Shift, Alt, Control, click on PC, get the gradient. You've, you've got the routine down by now, right? Get the gradient tool, drag it that way, and we've got our, whoops, I forgot to create the layer. You probably just saw that. He didn't create the layer. There we go. And it goes right in there. And let's lower that opacity quite a bit. So there's just a little bit of it there. Okay, so now you've got some dimension that looks a little more framey. Now, let's grab these layers, all of them, select them all. So I'm holding the Shift key and just selected them all. Then press Command E. That merges them all into one layer. So now it's just kind of sitting there on its own. Then we're going to go to the FX pop-up menu down here and choose Drop Shadow. And this is going to accomplish two things. Number one, it's going to give us a drop shadow that is on the outside of our image. But it's also going to give us a little drop shadow on the inside, on this side. So it'll give us a little more de depth. Uh, I usually lower the opacity a little bit on this. Just lower the opacity and maybe decrease the size. The size is how blurry it is, maybe by one. Okay, something like that. Here's the image I want to frame. So now you'll have to bring the image that you want to put in there and resize it so it kind of fits in there. Maybe something like that. Let's make it a little bit smaller inside this frame. There we go. All right, just move it over a little bit. Okay, now we're going to create a new layer under this. Let me get rid of this image now. Let's create a new layer under this layer for the mat. So hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on PC. Click the new layer icon here at the bottom of the layers palette and it creates this empty new layer here. So now I can get the rectangle tool and our marquee tool and draw where you want your mat to be around your image. So it's just kind of something like that. I usually make it pretty close to the image. Now, we're going to fill this with white, so make white your foreground color over here in the toolbar, and then Option Delete to fill it with white, and Alt Backspace on PC, and then Deselect. Okay, so you can see it, there is just a white square. Well, it's kind of hard to see there's a white square, but there it is. There actually is a white square back there. The reason why you need to fill it with white is you need to apply a, a layer style that can be seen here. So let's go to uh, Inner Glow and bring up the Inner Glow effect. We're going to make our color of our glow black. Okay, Then we're going to change the mode from screen to normal so we can actually see it. And now all you have to really do here is lower the opacity way down to like maybe 20% or something so you can see just a little bit of it there. And if you want it a little softer you could go maybe up a couple but you don't really want to make it too soft. There you go. So now, now that I made it softer I think I need to make it lighter. There we go. So you see a little bit of a matte there behind it. And to finish things off, maybe I would add some text. Let's go and choose the font Trajan Pro. And we'll stick it down uh, below the image and we'll put in here uh, in black, not in white. Let's switch our text color to black. And we'll put in uh, Kelby Photography. And then to add space between the letters, I'm going to hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on PC. And then use the right arrow key to add a bunch of space between those letters. There we go. And uh, maybe lower the text one point. It's 10 point. I'll make it 9 point. Okay, now, of course, it's way out of alignment. So what we can do is we can just either click on the, uh, on the frame and then click on the text and then click the center little button there. See how that way it centers it inside the frame. Just click the two you want together and click that one to, to center the whole thing. And that's the technique. There you've got. Now, I would do one more thing I have to tell you. Okay. So I would go and lower the opacity of the text a little. I usually keep it at like 70%. So it's it doesn't kind of bowl you over that your name is in the image there. All right. So there you have it. There's how to build a quick little frame with a little bit of depth, a little bit of dimension, and a mat. And, of course, the mat will actually, you can use it separately just for your for your own in-house printing, make it look like your stuff has a mat around it. Hey guys, thanks so much again. I'm Scott Kelby, and thanks for giving me a minute here to share with you, NAT members, a very, very cool technique.